This goes to my family and anyone who's still in the church who thinks that they can trust this place or trust the organization. Woman, Chelsea Goodrich. Right, because in 2015, when Chelsea was in grad school, some disturbing, long-buried memories began to resurface. When she was a child, allegedly her father and a Mormon bishop at the time, John Goodrich, routinely sexually assaulted her. In fact, John admitted to at least one of these incidents in a recording that was obtained by the Associated Press. With him there blaming the devil for his decision to climb into bed with his daughter after hearing sexual activity in an adjoining hotel room. And so Chelsea confided in a friend whose father, Paul, happened to be the guy church members go to if they have abuse claims. And when she felt ready, Chelsea met with him over several months, recording their conversations with with his knowledge and on the recommendation of her lawyer. And so her father ends up getting arrested for his alleged abuse, and Chelsea wants to know if the church will allow a bishop with whom John gave a confession to testify in the trial. And also a key thing is that she told Paul that church officials have known about the confession. So Paul replied the church leader, I'm gonna slow this down. I think he's, he kind of speaks really fast for some people. said they did not recall a bishop with whom John gave a confession to testify in the trial. And also his claims. And when she felt ready, Chelsea met with him over several months, recording their conversations with his knowledge and on the recommendation of her lawyer. And so her father ends up getting arrested for his alleged abuse, and Chelsea wants to know if the church will allow a bishop with whom John gave a confession to testify in the trial. And also a key thing is that she told Paul that church officials have known about the abuse for years because of other confessions. So Paul replied that church leaders said they did not recall hearing any such confession. But also, here's the thing, while she assumed that he was only there to to lend a sympathetic ear and help her find justice for the abuse committed against her, Paul was thinking about the church's interest because you see, he's the head of its risk management division. So in one of their later meetings, they sat down, had a brief prayer, and then got down to business. First of all, um, I sent you a letter indicating that the church was prepared to assist up to $90,000. I've been back and um, so uh, I have authorization up to three hundred thousand dollars. It's an exchange for that hefty six-figure sum. We both agree that we will not disclose that we've settled with you, and you will not disclose that you've settled with the church. You acknowledge that there's been some recordings made of all of our communications and uh, that you agree to destroy those recordings within 10 days of signing this. With him then saying that the reason the church wants those recordings destroyed is to protect him from being clipped out of context by lawyers. Now with that, Clearly, since you just listened to them, you know that the recordings were not destroyed. That's because reportedly a now ex-church member who attended the meetings as Chelsea's advocate and recorded the audio was not bound by the confidentiality agreement, and so he gave them to the AP. But also, by the time they came out, so much had happened to John already. Where Chelsea's abuse trial inspired another woman to accuse him of having non-consensual sex with her after sedating her with a drug from his... Yeah, so 